Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTE 211 week five assignment. Today's date is August 20th and uh, we need to get started because we don't got a lot of time. So first we need to verify that the firearm is clear. So we're going to drop the feed source, lock the slide to the rear inspect the chamber both visually and physically, this firearm is clear. Next, to do a dry functions check, we're just going to be checking the functionality of the firearm. So we're going to feel the slide. Everything feels good there. The hammer is cocked. We're gonna push the safety up, nothing. And push the safety down without engaging the back. Nothing. We'll engage both. Hammer drops. Slide works. Everything seems to be functioning so far. Next, using dummy ammunition snap caps, we're going to load these into the firearm. We're going to go through the same things we did with the dry, except for now we're testing feeding and chambering. We're going to do the same thing. No fire. Grab this with safety up, no fire. With both disengaged, we grip, pull, without being gentle, pull. This time we're gonna hold and listen for the reset. And it's all functioning. When performing the live fire test, we would load a live round, then a snap cap, then another live round. The reason for this is we wouldn't want to create a runaway situation if there was something going on with it. Um, and we would be able to run through the exact same test that we ran through with the other functions check. Um, so we would fire, then we would expect it to not fire on the second one and then fire again on the third one. Um, and that would complete um, the full cycle of operations. We've been asked to evaluate the trigger. I don't think that there's that much difference between whether or not the hammer is cocked by this or whether or not the hammer is cocked with your thumb, but we'll evaluate both. We're gonna evaluate this on three metrics. That's the take up of the trigger, which is the movement before the hammer drops and then the reset of the trigger. We're gonna talk about how it feels and we're going to see whether or not it functions, which we've already checked that. So again, we're going grip. There's a little bit of, a little bit of take up about 16th of an inch before it hits the wall. A very little movement for the actual uh, firing. It did fire the hammer and then we'll do the reset. And you can see there with the reset is the same as the take up. Cock it with just the hammer this time. About a 16th of an inch of take up. About a 16th of an inch to the fire. And so then your reset is about, whatever that is about. Um, maybe an eighth of an inch for the reset. Overall, I'd say this trigger is nicer than most striker fire triggers. All right, quickly to measure the barrel length, we're going to take a brass rod with a splint tip. We are going to insert it into the firearm in the vise uh, with the action closed. We're going to make a mark with a Sharpie going to take that and measure that from the mark to the end that is a five inch barrel okay and measure the twist rate we have our cleaning rod with a jag on there with the uh, I doubled up the cotton that's at the tip we're gonna put the flag in and we're going to push it in just to that first line that we can see there and we're going to watch the flag turn Yep. Okay, so right at a quarter turn, 
So I'm gonna come back. Whoops, let me make my mark. And we're gonna come back. I did a quarter turn. We're gonna measure from that spot that I had right here to the mark, which is right at, we're gonna call it four inches. So four times four is 16. So this is a one in 16 twist barrel. When measuring for headspace, you need to use a go and a no-go gauge. You can take the slide off of the barrel and move the barrel forward, take the go gauge. Well, first let's look at it, what it looks like without anything in it. So we can see that the barrel is completely locked. There's no space up here. This is um, without any um, gauge in it whatsoever. So we're gonna take this back, take the go gauge, slide it down into the extractor and then feed that into the barrel. Then when we close the barrel, it should look the same as what it looked like before uh, without, the, um, without any of the gauges in it, which it does. We can see that the barrel is fully in the locked position and there's no space there. So now we're going to take this back forward and get it to come loose, there we go. Take out the go gauge and put in the no go gauge and then we're going to slide the barrel back. Now with that, you can see this large gap has formed right here and the barrel doesn't re retreat all the way to the rear. So this is not in the locked position. So this no go didn't go. So now we verified the head space for this particular firearm is good with go working and no go not working.